I've called 2024 the year of chaos. There is this expect the unexpected energy this year. And when you have almost half of the human population going through an important election year, this can be rather concerning or disconcerting. But it's also useful to point out that we may have some shocking disruptive outcomes that end up being quite positive. So we'll get the full spectrum, some of the shocking negative stuff, some of the shocking positive stuff. But shocking is the uncontested key word here, or chaos. And although we generalize the energy over the entirety of the year, we can use that word, okay, chaotic. But we also recognize that there's particular months throughout the year where this energy is at peak and we're coming up on one of those peaks. On March 25th, we enter into eclipse season. We'll start to feel the eclipse probably a week before March 25th. So there's an eclipse then at the end of the month, and then another eclipse in April. Meanwhile, in April, we have the, the Saturn-Mars conjunction, which will be quite eventful. And last but certainly not least, arguably the biggest event of the entire year, Jupiter will conjunct Uranus next month. It's coming up on the conjunction now, but it will be at peak in April. So we're in this, I wouldn't call the calm before the storm because there's still some chaotic energy going on right now. We have uh, Mars and Venus in a square aspect to Uranus. You'll see this when I bring up the chart. So we're certainly not devoid of disruptive energy, but this is a calmer, quiescent energy overall. When we take into consideration, we've just entered into Pisces season, this new moon happening in Pisces right next to Saturn and Neptune in Pisces, four of the 10 planets all in one sign, inviting us to go within, to explore consciousness. The archetypes associated with Pisces, there are many, but the classic ones are the mystic, the dreamer, the poet, the visionary, the observer. I mean, there's many of them that all speak to different faces of Pisces, but they all point to the inner realm, the exploration of consciousness, the exploration of how we feel in our emotions. Uh, the exploration on how we feel on just an energetic or psychic level, the internal exploration through beautiful uh, acts of creativity. It's a deeply imaginative sign as well. But Pisces is always about going within. So I wouldn't call this period of time in mid-March, early to mid-March, the calm before the storm. It's more about becoming the eye of the storm and finding that place of becoming uh, that place of the detached observer within a realm of chaos. So no matter what's going on outside of you, can I remain in this quiescent state? That's one of the core evolutionary intentions for this month. And with that being said, let's go ahead and bring up the chart so you can see what I'm talking about. All right, as you can see here, we have Saturn, Sun, Moon, and Neptune all in the sign of Pisces. So this is a major feature of this new moon, needless to say. And then we also have this uh, Mars and Venus conjunction, which has been going on for a few weeks now, but here it is. And it's in a rather tight square, especially in Mars's case, uh, to Uranus here. Now, Mars, the war god, in a hard aspect to Uranus, the god of earthquakes and lightning bolts, uh, these planets are very different from each other, but what they have in common is they both like disruption, okay? Uh, this is the energy of, uh, of surprise, of firecrackers, of unforeseen things falling apart or being destructive, uh, even technological uh, disruption. It can manifest in a lot of different ways, but it's it's usually of the more uh, sudden variety. That's just the case with Uranus. Uh, that, that phrase I use at the beginning, expect the unexpected, uh, is definitely a part of this archetypal field. So as I said, the chaotic energy is going on now, mainly because of this event, but the chaos is going to ramp up substantially again in April. So, uh, in this preparatory process 
previous to entering into the season of chaos, we enter within. We go within. This Pisces energy is so strong. The planet that rules Pisces is Neptune. And here we find Neptune in its own sign, along with this new moon, along with Saturn. Uh, Saturn, the energy of Saturn always wants to sink its teeth into something, get down to work. Get down to work with what? Well, you know, Pisces is about the exploration of consciousness, as I said at the beginning. And there's a, a Piscean phrase, which I want to use here. Uh, we'll recognize there's a great power in this phrase, but uh, also it can be a dangerous phrase as well. And here it is. Uh, what will it matter in 500 years? Imagine you're uh, in a car and you're in L.A. traffic, bumper to bumper. It's near rush hour. You're late for a critical appointment. There's also some road work going on, which is why the congestion's even worse. And everybody's honking their horn and getting really angry. And what do you do within this realm of chaos that you find yourself in? You know, here you are going to miss your appointment. It's so easy to get lost in the stress of that, you know. But in this version of the story, you get the, the A on the report card. And uh, you come to this place within yourself of uh, what will it matter in 500 years? You know, oh, there's some road work going on. Everybody's edgy and frustrated and honking. But you have this attitude in this moment of what will it matter in 500 years? And you feel calm. You feel tranquil. And instead of getting angry, you take this opportunity to, to go inside, to find the stillness inside. And if you want an A plus on your report card, you might enter into that quiescent state and then even visualize in your mind the traffic starting to flow better and take that as an opportunity to allow your mind to affect matter. So what will it matter in 500 years? This is a Pisces question. It's a, it's a Pisces perspective. It's like I can just sit here and wait patiently. This is an opportunity to meditate, to sit into a, a serene Piscean state of consciousness. And you look at the person next to you, the car next to you, and he's screaming. And we know which person is going to be happier in that moment. So a good question to ask yourself, this philosophical question to ask yourself during this time is, how much suffering do we create sweating the small stuff? That's another Piscean cliche. Don't sweat the small stuff because it's just small stuff. Now, if you can remember that and do that, it feels good. You know, it lifts you up to a higher level of consciousness, even in a chaotic environment. And that's the more ecstasy side of Pisces, and it's very real. You make that strong response to Pisces in that chaotic moment, you feel good. Nothing bothers you that much. What will it matter in 500 years? And then there's another part of you, the real part of you, the immortal part of you, if you will, that says, oh, 500 years, piece of cake. I'm an ancient luminous being, you know. So when you get to that place of spaciousness within you, it feels light, literally. It is light. You're increasing the light within you, so to speak. So this whole thing is a, is a very Piscean or Neptunian process of connecting with and shining out into the world your eternal soul, the part of you that is immortal. The infinite soul having a finite experience. The immortal soul stuck in a meat bag, you know. And 500 years is nothing in the face of eternity. That's nothing to us, us souls. You know, that's just a blink of an eye. So Pisces is the part of us that exists beyond time. And the part of you that knows when you're stuck in a red light in traffic, it's not worth a heart attack. But let's turn this around. Every front has a back. The dark side of this, what will it matter in 500 years, is when we kind of just drift through life. 
and we feel disconnected from our own individuality and identity. And our life, just we just kind of float through life. And if we do that, we inappropriately transcend our lives. We stop taking responsibilities for ourselves. And we don't identify with our own identity. Now, one thing we can count on is here we sit in these bodies, you know. And if we assume life to be meaningful, there's a reason you're born in this body. And the idea that we're all one and connected, okay, that's useful. But we're also individuals as well. And we're working out our own karma. These are very specific evolutionary paths. So for somebody who has a healthy relationship with the mystic archetype associated with Pisces and Neptune, they can feel the spaciousness inside of themselves and not get caught up in the drama through a, from a place of detached observation. And they can still make acts of volition without the drifting part of that. And if we're in an unhealthy relationship with our inner mystic, we can drift or become unable to take action or, uh, and rationalizing it with, oh, what will it matter in 500 years? And then you just start your, to watch your life happen to you, watching it as though you were a movie. And we get sucked up into the illusion, illusion of it all. You know, there's a great book. I haven't read it in over a decade. Um, it's called The Untethered Soul by Michael Singer. And he has a part in that book, I'm probably going to butcher it a little bit, but he talks about this whole process of becoming the observer that sees everything. And the metaphor he used is somebody who goes to a movie theater to watch a movie. They sit down in the seats, they got their popcorn or whatever, the movie turns on. And, you know, everybody's a little different, but all of us to varying degrees kind of get sucked up into that illusion of the movie. You know, our, our connection with time and what's going on around us uh, begins to shift and change a little bit as we totally get sucked up into this illusion, into this movie. And we can even have emotional reactions to this movie because our mind thinks we're actually living it. So there's that example of the person caught up in the illusion. And then Michael also goes on to say, well, now consider the movie projectionist. I don't even know if they use projectors anymore that are human manned. <laughs> I mean, I don't know the inner workings of a movie theater. Uh, I did run an old school projector uh, many years ago. But back in the day, there was always somebody at the helm there. Now, for somebody at the movie projector, they're up in a different room. They're up in a booth and they're tinkering with the technology and they're actually seeing the image go out on the screen. So they're looking at this reality created for this person down watching the movie from a half step back from the person actually caught in the illusion. So they, the, the, the person, the projectionist, is the great observer because they can see what's really going on here. They can see the illusion on the screen, but they're a half step back from it. They're not going to get totally immersed and caught up into that illusion, and they can see it for what it is. They can see reality for what it is. And that's what I mean during this time to become the eye of the storm, that place of tranquility where there's such chaos all around us. Now, planet Earth is a lively place. There's always going to be chaos, 2024, I would say chaos energy is at peak, especially entering into the end of March and April is, is one of the biggest hotspots of the year. And we're doing the preparatory process, the hard Saturnian work necessary to enter into this more chaotic energy from a place of serenity, tranquility. I'm not going to get sucked up into the movie of it all. I'm going to recognize this is part of the illusion. Some of the dramas on the screen will happen, but I'm not a part of them. I'm not going to get sucked up into that drama in a more reactive way. And then through my own pain and suffering, create more pain and suffering in the world. I'm going to remain as this person meditating in heavy traffic being able to be in this place of equilibrium, serenity, and tranquility, even though there's honking going on all around me. Me personally, when I meditate, I like to turn off all the lights. I even like to have noise-canceling headphones. 
you know, turn off all the senses so I can go within. It helps me to enter into deep trance quicker if I don't have any external stimulus, if, you know, working on any of my senses. Now, it's possible for me also to meditate at a busy bus station. It's much more difficult, you know, but it is possible. And seasoned meditators that have been doing it for many years can enter into deep levels of consciousness even at the bus station, you know, because they've trained themselves to do so. So it's not like you need to go down and find a busy bus station and start practicing meditation, but that's just an image for one of the core evolutionary intentions, working with this on a positive level that you can do in your personal life. So obviously a daily meditation practice is going to be super useful here. What types of meditation? Um, I would say meditations that help you to observe. And this is some of the more classical forms of meditations taught in the world. You know, uh, mindfulness meditations, meditations where you're very aware of the space between thoughts a thought or emotion might occur in meditation. You just observe it. You let it drift. You know, these are observation meditations. You know, the different meditations for different things you're trying to work on. But the more classical mindfulness meditations will be really good right now so that you don't get sucked up into the drama of the chaos. I'll also say meditations that involve visualization because uh, Pisces is the visionary archetype, the great imagineer. So that's also quite powerful. And then also meditations that help us to gain perspective. I just released a new meditation on my channel, Meditation Nexus. Uh, I'll put a link to the video above if you want to check out the meditation. But it's a meditation to practice astral travel. And it really helps to leave the confines of this meat bag, so to speak, to explore you know, to feel a deep level of expanded awareness. And that helps to realize, okay, we're on this small little spinning ball of dirt, planet Earth, but we're just a grain of sand. It doesn't mean we're insignificant or meaningless, quite the opposite. We're very, very powerful as souls incarnate. But to gain perspective on, on how vast everything is will help us to return to this state of, let's say, humility, and recognizing that, okay, in every moment, every thought and emotion I express resonates at a certain level of consciousness. And although there's a lot of edgy, chaotic energy around me, I'm going to stay within the eye of the storm. I'm going to stay in this place of tranquility and detached observation whilst simultaneously maintaining my ability to give action and acts of volition. So I cannot just be an, a passive observer, letting things happen. What will it matter in 500 years? Let things be as they may. But instead, choose to take action from a higher level of consciousness. And then you manifest this more spiritual warrior archetype who can decisively claim directions that they need to while simultaneously you know, remaining in this state of, of serenity and love and light. These are the core evolutionary intentions with the goal being to expand our consciousness.